Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I continue to plot modules on the surface of the moon in the hope that we can have a large settlement before the lag brings it all to a halt. And we have this time a light post because I feel, I felt like we really needed lights on the lunar surface. And so we've got lights up there, they're already turned on, they're a little bit purplish. And we've got four of them. I don't know if these are the best lights, but they said they were powerful. I know how the lights work in KSV-1. Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm not assuming that necessarily they're going to be as bright in KSV-2. These don't cast any light in the VAB, so it's tough to tell. Uh, the lights I put on the ISS in the previous version sure didn't do a whole lot. So these are the spotlights. They should do more, but... Well, they're not doing much in here, so I don't know how well it's going to work. Uh, we are powering this with one of these reactors. You'll have reactor enabled. We even need it, but because <laughs> uh, electric charge draw in the game right now is not particularly predictable. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll have reactor enabled. Why not? Uh, you probably shouldn't have it in real life when launching stuff, but this is Kerbal. Uh, I wanted to put that at the bottom, but it doesn't have a bottom, it doesn't have two nodes, it only has one node, so it's more, it's easier to put it at the top, uh, we could have put it radially, but of course that sort of unbalances things, so I put extra fuel at the bottom, much more than we need, in the hope that it's not going to tip over, because that's still pretty heavy, but it might st still tip over, we'll find out. Now we have problems with the decoupler killing our launcher, and so we've got docking ports this time, at least those are tried and true from the shuttle. We could have used separatrons, but I... not separatrons, sorry. Um, stack separators, but I don't want to clean up the mess, so we'll just go with docking ports. And I've tuned them so that they have the minimal docking attraction possible, and the root part is the reaction wheel here. We are obviously using the clipper, the clipper that I had introduced in the previous version. However, this is not the craft file from the previous version. I built it from scratch for this version so we don't have any issues with the control surfaces, which uh, people noted on the shuttle test in this version. So uh, on the shuttle test, we had control surfaces going the wrong way. I'll fix the shuttle later, but for now, I decided to just build this from scratch so that hopefully it'll work, or if it doesn't work, we'll know that it's because of this version and not a craft file from the previous version. So the clipper is, for those who didn't see that video, uh, basically a stage with a rhino here and two Clydesdale boosters, and it's supposed to come back after delivering, delivering the payload to orbit. So that's the idea, and hopefully it'll work out. Last time it actually was sort of recoverable, but uh, it went out of control beforehand. And this time it's painted differently, it's black and white. We'll go with different color schemes along the way. The base modules will, pre will predominantly be purple and white, but this uh, the launchers, I'll just go with whatever I feel like at the time. So anyway, let's launch. There's no Kerbal on board this. It's still not necessarily picking ground. Um, this isn't the orientation I want, but I guess we'll try and roll into it. We don't have to wait for any timing. So let's see if my spacebar works. It does. And ignition. And launch. And well, it shouldn't be tilting at all. Here, hold up <laughs> for a little bit. I wanna roll. I wanna roll. Keep it holding up. Keep it holding up. Okay, roll sort of complete. Alright. Let's say yes now. Well, this is dangerous. Okay, so what we're gonna do is a flight test. Ooh. Oh, the payload is swaying. Oh, it's all breaking apart. I thought we could save it. Well, at least there weren't any Kerbals. I guess I'm gonna need to strut the payload. I thought just making the root part the reaction wheel would, would have been good enough, but... I guess not. Okay. Well, I'm just going to revert this. Uh, we, we know what happened. Let me replace the boosters. I did have to shift them a little bit because of the wing, 
you see. But I guess we won't shift them at all. I obviously checked the center mass and center lift again, and you'll note that the canards are smaller than previously with the clipper. So what about the payload? It is a tall payload. I guess we'll strut it to the side of the bay and hope for the best like that. Purple struts. Okay. Let's see if that helps. I want our reactor tilting out of the bay, do we? And go. And launch. Let me just lean this way right away. It's still a low thrust weight ratio, and we mostly want to go straight up. So let me just avoid leaning too much. I don't feel like I have any control at all right now. And breaking apart. Hmm. Well, this is going great so far. It worked better in the previous version, which is sort of scary. Well, it's a submarine now. It is. Look. Okay. Third time is the charm, right? And go. And hold up. Just hold up. Uh, it's trying to not stay up. Gosh, what is wrong with this thing? Well, I mean, that's sort of pitching down in the back. Some of those are just going the wrong way, I think. Let's just try this. Um, don't do pitch. Uh, it's the wings uh, just like to be reversed. Well, let's invert. Oh, okay. All right. I think that was the problem. Still, don't trust it with the pitch. <laughs> okay. Booster set. Whoa, that was quite a jolt. Oh, fudge. Okay, okay. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> We're effectively retro-burning a bit here because we started going to the west. Okay, I think we're finally going in the proper direction. It says we've got enough Delta V. I did turn off cross-feeding on the docking ports. So let's hope that actually happens. Of course, this uh, launcher was meant for larger payloads than this, so of course we had extra Delta V. Okay, uh, we'll cut it there. Let's see if everything's okay with the payload, and in particular whether it has the fuel it's supposed to have. Well, the lights are working there. Well, it, it, in the part manager, it doesn't like expanding the fuel tanks at all. It gives this little dot thing, just like it has on the vessel resources right there. Like, it's thought about showing other resources, but it decided not to. So, we'll use the resource manager. Okay, <laughs> it had me worried for a sec. Yes, they're all filled. It's just a big tank on the launcher that is not. Okay, well, now we get to see whether other things work. <laughs> um, docking port time. Which docking port is a safe docking? Oh, we definitely need to move the Nosco now. The reactor is up there. Looks like the struts worked, by the way. But now let's see if we can get it off safely. Undock. I'm guessing that's a no. That's a no. No, we can't get it off safely. It wasn't the decoupler, I guess. We don't have the F3 menu to tell us what exactly exploded, huh? I'll try and use the stack separators. Was it the struts? Was it because I strutted it to the side of the bay? So first thing, let's change the controls of these. So we'll just say invert controls. I don't know if I want to invert roll. Maybe we should just have it not do pitch, but then maybe rolls backwards too, so... Yeah, we'll just revert, uh, invert. Uh, just for safety's sake, I'm gonna tuck in the sparks. 
There was enough space with the docking ports, but with the stack separator, there's not enough space. Maybe we shouldn't have it to the cargo bay. We can strut it to this part, which is the root part. We'll just strut straight down. We'll see how that works out for us. If it doesn't work this time, I'm just gonna do something more conventional. What choice do I have? So, alright. Ignition. I mean... Ignition. And launch. Uh, it's rolling for some reason. I didn't ask it to roll. Okay, just SAS stop. Well, it's spin stabilized now. I mean, the reaction wheel should handle it. They do need to be able to roll. For landing. Maybe I'll uh, go like this for them. Oh, that hasn't helped anything. Oh boy. Okay, I'm so done with this. I am so done with this. <laughs> we're, we're gonna launch it with something more normal. Oh yeah, it, it's got the thing where it's following the other parts. The camera is not following it properly. See, it sits off here because of the other parts that got exploded off of it. Yeah. Okay, right. Out of electric charge, no kidding. Okay. We're gonna have a normal launcher, not recoverable. I wanted recoverable launchers, but... The game <laughs> has decided that this is not... Not going to happen, so we'll simplify. I just want to make a moon base. That's the priority. Alright, so I decided to go big and dumb, hopefully cheap, with the Mammoth 2. Uh, we are going with overwhelming power. And we'll see how that works out for us. We certainly should have enough Delta V to make orbit with this. And plenty of thrust weight ratio. The fairing's a bit big though. So I've decided to put fins on to help with control. I've started the payload to the fairing base. In the hopes that it won't wobble. But we've got 0.1 meter per second here for some reason. So that's suspicious. Well, let's try it out. Launch. This is my first use of the Mammoth 2 in desperation. We don't have the big reaction wheel anymore. And control is with the controller at the base of the payload. There's no controller on the rocket. Um, I decided to use the decoupler because we don't care about the rocket's return anymore, so and I'm taking extra time to turn for safety's sake. This is so old-timey in its own way. Oh, 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 no, 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 Okay, it's tilty. Uh... Maybe I should get rid of the fairing now. Fairings. Can't live with them, can't live without them, and the can't live without them part is debatable. Oh, we're going really high. Let's just wait. We're not trying to recover this. <laughs> we just want to finally get our module to its destination. Uh, really laggy at 4x time warp in the atmosphere. Oh! When we do 4x time warp in the atmosphere, and then we cross into space, it just dis destroyed itself. <laughs> okay, we discovered something else. Oh, this is just a process of discovery, isn't it? All right, no, no more time warping in the atmosphere. Got it, got it. All right, up it goes again. So I mentioned throttling down through Max Q. Uh, that's a complicated business. It's not so simple as always solving your problems. We don't need to throttle through max Q. Most rockets don't. Some rockets do. Long rockets or rockets with lots of bits sticking out should probably throttle down through max Q. So something like Falcon 9, which is a really long rocket, that's a good idea. Rocket with a really awkward payload fairing? Maybe. You know, maybe. Especially if we didn't have the fins. 
but then again, if you throw all down, you're losing your control, so let's just cut it, toss off the fairings, and wait. And I'm not got a time warp this time. No time warping. Maybe we'll still disintegrate, so I'm wondering. No, we passed the boundary into space, and we are not disintegrating. That's nice. Okay, that's Orbit. I really don't want the space junk, but we'll leave it. Okay. That's that. Oh, do we have two decouplers there? Oh, I'm, I might have accidentally left two decouplers. Okay. We are separated. We have activated liquid engines. Okay, we're getting away from the big dumb launcher. And we're off, finally. Okay, that's a fine enough transfer for now. God, how many times did our nuclear reactor explode? You just know that having a nuclear reactor on board, and an active one at that, just, uh, just ensures that you're going to have your rocket explode a few times. It's a little bit sad that it doesn't seem to put the uranium up there, but... It says 0 0.0009 tons per day, so I'm not worried about it or anything. Again, we have way more Delta V than we need because I needed to counterbalance the heavy reactor at the top, which <laughs> might still cause problems, you know. Okay, and go. Okay, we've got a good periapsis. We are headed over there. Departing Carbon. We have entered Mooner SOI. Uh, up, up, up. Looks like the base is in daylight. We're certainly not going for a direct landing this time. That was because it was approaching night and I decided that it would be best to just go for it. But we'll capture first. And then probably tilt our orbit a little bit. We'll probably do both at the same time. The spark engines do not provide a whole lot of thrust here. We'll have to be careful. Ah, uh, the inclination bit didn't work out very well because I was late, I guess. Well, we've set something over there as a target. Don't know which one it is. Still seem in line with it. So we're going to do a landing preparation burn, which will have us shoot out till about there. Okay. There they are. I hope they'll appreciate the nuclear reactor dropping in on them. Yeah, RCS, more reaction wheels, a lot of things would have been nice on this. Whoa, it's wobbly. It's tough. But we wanted the uh, lights to cast their purpley goodness over a wide swath of land, so... That's a bit too much residual velocity there. Come back here, velocity vector. The heroes RCS would be helpful. I could still stay pointing up and down while adjusting the velocity vector. Oh, be stiff. All right, it is stiff. All right. Well, they landed in one piece, which is amazing. And it's within 200 meters of the other two things, but how much light does it cast in the dark? Right now it doesn't seem to be doing much here, and the tilt might be a little bit too low. Uh, we can adjust that though, it's got a pitch angle thing. So this is just the minimum pitch for it. But let's see how they look in the dark. They ain't doing squat. <laughs> they should be lighting something, right? Is there... Do you see a purple haze? I don't see a purple haze. Maybe a little bit, but gosh. These used to be much more powerful. You can sort of see something going on there. But it ain't a whole lot. 
And this is like maximum intensity. We've got a nuclear reactor attached to them. If I've got a nuclear reactor attached to some lights, I'm looking for some powerful lights. Crashing trajectory again, but nothing is actually jumping around. We'll just uh, change vessels. Everything seems... Oh, this one. No, this one was dubious. Oh, <gasps> no, no. Keep Bill safe. Okay, we, we've got some things going on. Gosh, if that happened to the light post, it'd be in big trouble. But considering its lights don't seem to do anything, it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> Uh, but it's stable right now. Switch, and they all sort of take a little bit of a hop. Okay, yes, we have something else to deliver. Let's see how that goes. So originally I was going to launch the next payload on the clipper, and I had made the craft file already, and I didn't realize that the clipper was going to be so much trouble. Uh, but we were going to launch this four-seat lander cannon. We're basically going up in scale, right? We started off with the cupola, we did the tuna can, and now this one is about double the size of the, uh, of the tuna can, this Wanderer, and it's a four-seat lander can. We gotta put it on top of a little stage that would land it on the surface. And it's not as unwieldy as the lamppost, uh, so maybe it would work out in the clipper and wouldn't wobble a whole lot. But I'm taking a look at the center of mass and center of lift here, and I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what it's trying to do there. Um, it shouldn't be there in the first place, I'll point that out. Uh, the center of mass and center of lift without the boosters are pretty close together. Uh, I've already tried that, and the payload would move the, the center of mass a little bit forward. The boosters... Uh, on average are a little bit further back and so the center mass doesn't move that much. In fact, I placed RCS thrusters exactly where the center mass was dry when the whole thing is dry and that's there. The center of lift is supposed to be very close to it and now it's reading way back there and I don't know why but it makes me worried and uh, first of all it's not supposed to be up there the center of lift would be down here because the wings are lower mounted. So we're not going to use the clipper. We're especially not going to use the clipper because Valentina is the next person to ride. So, uh, and we've made a thing of, uh, I, I actually loaded her in and I, go, I, I thought about it because, I mean, I want to test it and everything. Uh, I thought about it, but it doesn't seem like a good idea. So, we're not going to do that. We've been launching Kerbals with all of our modules, just one, and we're going in order on the list. So, we're going to not do this. I'm going to make the crew cabin the root part for now. And we're going to get rid of the launcher, and we're just going to use the dumb launcher we launched last time. It's probably safer that way. We've got a big battery on top. I'm actually... We don't need that much battery power, I don't think. I'll put a little battery on the bottom and then the decoupler. And again, we'll use the standard decoupler because we don't care what happens to the launcher. Okay, once again, our hopefully no fuss, big dumb purple launcher now with added Valentina. So go and launch. Maybe we will throttle down this one. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratio. We don't need that much. Okay, well, no flip this time, I think. Let's get rid of the fairings. Ooh. Those. Yeah. I mean, we can up the ejection force, I know, but... I don't like them anyway. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not fond of them. Oh, I let the app wapses go up in the hope that I could get into orbit on a single burn. We'll just we'll just decouple it here. It's technically suborbital. Extra stiff landing gear. Oh, the moon is right there. It must be about the right time to go, actually. Yeah, we could probably get started soon. 
It's weird that we're using a bunch of sparks on the heavier ones, where we use the terrier on the lighter ones. But that was because I was or originally thinking that we were going to mount these with a docking port. So it made sense to have multiple engines and have it arranged like this. Same with the lamppost. And go. Oh gosh, you know what I forgot? I forgot the ladder. I was gonna have to use a jetpack or whoever occupies this. I mean, it has room for four. Uh, we're just gonna have to use the jetpack to get up in there. Someday we'll have engineer functions and the engineers could just slap one on, but not now. Okay, that's nice. Let's head over there. Valentina is on her way to the moon. Well, I think we want to do an inclination change right now. Because we're going north and it's quite south, unless we want to wait a long while, which I don't. Okay, that's fine, I think. Okay. And... Correction burn. Shall we go straight in? It's possible. Yeah, I mean, this episode's taken long enough already. We'll do a correction here to the south. Just using the map right now. Okay, there's our base. I haven't even targeted it yet. What does it think I'm targeting right now? Okay, there's the real target. I don't know what it was targeting before. Okay, dropping in here. This is not an optimal approach to land on the moon. But... We've got Delta V. That's fine. Well, it's nice that this is a lot more nimble than the light post was, but... Cause me to do too much. Must be cautious. Crashing trajectory. Things are already on a crashing trajectory. Interestingly, when we got like 800 meters away, nothing has actually disintegrated, I think. Okay, we've got some dust kicking up. Okay, shut down. Pretty sticky. Good. And panels extending. So now things look like that. So we landed right in the middle of the other three. So that's nice. Now yeah, let me drop the UI. Well, that's our happy little base right now. Oh, dropping the UI, pressing F2 to drop the UI does not get rid of the bottom thing. That's interesting. I was sort of expecting that that would go away too. That's not ideal, but I mean, that should be gone as well for screenshots and the like. All right, well, anyway, we have done it. Val is on the surface and things. Oh no, I just turned to it. Bob's, Bob's tilted over. Ah, uh, well, okay. It begins. Um, let's see if we can write this, I think. Let's try and extend panels and see if they can push us over. Uh, uh, oh, oh, maybe, uh, uh, come on, up, up, up. Okay, uh, let me try. Okay, uh, it's not as good at doing up as I can with just pressing D. Okay, we've saved it. Solar panels, really strong in this version of KSB. Um, okay, this is apparently solid. Okay, we've gone through all of them. We had a tip over, but they're all right now. So there you have it, folks. Our moon base continuing to be under construction. I really need to find a preferred launch vehicle for these that won't, you know, do something horrible along the way up or 
uh, ideally be able to come back down again too, but let's settle for not doing anything horrible on the way up. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.